Item Number SCP-4282 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-4282 is to be stored in a standard secure weapon locker at Site-68. The care and maintenance procedures for SCP-4282 are identical to any non-anomalous black powder cap and ball firearm. Testing of SCP-4282 must be authorized by a level 3 researcher or higher. Be advised that SCP-4282's anomalous ability will target individuals that meet either of the following criteria. 1. Guilty of theft of any nautical vessel, including non-motorized vessels such as sailing boats, canoes, and kayaks. Also includes subnautical vessels, or submarines. Vessels must be capable of containing human occupants. 2. Guilty of piracy, as defined by Title 18, Chapter 81 of the United States Code. SCP-4282's criteria are slightly broader, but this definition will suffice for testing and containment purposes. Note, any Foundation personnel stationed at Site-68 that meet the above requirements in any way should contact their immediate supervisor for transfer. See Incident Report 4282-A. Description SCP-4282 is a 44 caliber single-shot black powder handgun that utilizes a percussion cap as a primer. The operation of SCP-4282 is identical to any other muzzle-loading black powder firearm, except that projectiles loaded into the muzzle do not directly exit the barrel. Upon firing SCP-4282, the nearest living human guilty of piracy or theft of a nautical vessel will suffer a fatal gunshot wound to the back of the head. Wounds caused by SCP-4282 are consistent between targets featuring an entry wound through the parietal bone of the cranium and an exit wound through the right eye socket, although some cases present larger exit wounds than others. Analysis of the entry wounds reveals burns consistent with black powder and a 44 caliber hole, suggesting a point-blank shot from a muzzle-loading black powder firearm. In conjunction, high-speed footage of SCP-4282 reveals that the projectile does not exit the barrel directly, but instead teleports to the nearest offender that meets the criteria, regardless of distance. Fired shots retain their velocity and lethality, but are dependent on an adequate powder charge. Engraved on the right side of the barrel in cursive are the words, Mutiny's Bane. Note, it was initially believed that SCP-4282 simply kills its user but Foundation testing has clarified the function of the firearm described above. For more insight into testing of SCP-4282, see the test results below. Discovery SCP-4282 came to the attention of the Foundation when security footage from the bridge of the MV Almazon, a general cargo vessel operating off the Horn of Africa, was intercepted by a Foundation operative embedded in the British Navy. The security footage log is attached. Open Security Footage Log Timestamp 2004 at 11.28 hours Security cameras record the events of a hijacking by a group of Somali pirates. The incident provokes an immediate response by special forces operating from the British frigate HMS Monmouth, but not before a hostage situation evolved on the bridge, involving the lead pirate and the second officer of the Almazan. The pirate, who has expended all of the ammunition in his AK-47 rifle, pulls SCP-4282 from his satchel and holds it against the officer's head, clearly unaware of its anomalous property. Special forces breach the control room, at which point the pirate panics, firing SCP-4282 at point-blank range into the officer's right temple. Footage then shows the pirate's right eye explode, ejecting a sizable chunk of the cranium and some brain matter. Simultaneously, the Special Forces operative breaching the room is struck in the upper thigh with a 44 caliber lead ball. No further anomalous activity is recorded. Note, the second officer suffered only a perforated eardrum and some minor burns. MV Almazan was recaptured without further casualty or injury. Reports turned over by the British revealed that the lead ball was in fact fired from SCP-4282, despite the firearm not being aimed at either the pirate or the Special Forces operative. An inspection of the bridge proved that the shot could not have come from outside the room. Class A amnestics were administered to all individuals who were involved or had knowledge of the hostage situation on the bridge. All other aspects of the incident, including the hijacking itself, did not require action on the part of the Foundation, as all anomalous activity was contained on the bridge, and the wounds inflicted by SCP-4282 were explained by non-anomalous gunfire. Testing 
projectile should be 0.440 round lead ball, and the powder charge should be measured at 20 grains of 3F powder or equivalent. Modern number 11 percussion caps are adequate for use with the firearm. As a failsafe, two D-Class personnel that meet the testing criteria see containment procedures, must be present whenever SCP-4282 is to be loaded and fired. These D-Class personnel will take a primary D1, and secondary D2 position of 3 meters and 5 meters from the firearm, respectively. As soon as SCP-4282 is loaded, all D-Class personnel must be treated as loaded firearms, and as such will be faced towards the firing range and away from all Foundation researchers at all times. All other personnel must remain outside the 5 meter radius during testing. All D-Class subjects used in testing must be fitted with a protective Kevlar helmet, capable of nullifying the lethal effect of SCP-4282's bullet. Test Results the following is a summation of SCP-4282's anomalous abilities as discovered in testing. A comprehensive test log can be found here. SCP-4282 Test Log 1. SCP-4282 has a range greater than kilometers. An upper limit on this range has not yet been discovered. 2. The bullet fired by SCP-4282 can be stopped before striking the targeted individual by use of a helmet. 3. SCP-4282 does not target deceased humans. 4. SCP-4282 does not recognize the theft of a model or toy vessel. 5. SCP-4282 will recognize a stolen vessel as small as a kayak or canoe. 6. In most cases, replacing any part of SCP-4282 will cause it to become inert. For an exception to this, see Incident Report 4282-B. SCP-4282 Comprehensive Test Log Date February 1st, 2005 at 0930 hours Description SCP-4282 is fired by D-22873 in an attempt to reproduce its anomalous property observed in the security footage. Result D-22873 is unharmed and no projectile is seen exiting the barrel. Notes after this test, it was brought to Foundation attention that an inmate serving time in Escambia County Jail in Pensacola, Florida was struck and killed by a projectile, seemingly from SCP-4282. This incident has been contained. The distance between SCP-4282 and the target was approximately kilometers. We are currently cross-referencing the inmate's background with that of the pirate scene in the security footage. Date. February 10th, 2005 at 1100 hours. Description: SCP-4282 is fired by D-22873, who has previously been seen not to be affected by SCP-4282, while three D-class subjects, D-44229, D-56437, and D-41315, stand on the firing line at regular intervals. These subjects have been chosen for their similarity to the two previous victims of SCP-4282. Result: D-56437 is fatally wounded by SCP-4282, all other subjects unaffected. Notes: Thus far, the only similarities between Victim 1, the pirate, Victim 2, the inmate, and Victim 3, D-56437, are their crimes, namely assault and theft of property. Notably, all three of the subjects share crimes that are related in some way to watercraft piracy, theft of a jet ski, and eco-terrorism of a whaling vessel. Date: February 10th, 2005 at 11:25 hours. Description: SCP-4282 is fired by Dr. While a D-class subject with a criminal history similar to the previous victims is positioned on the firing line, D82281. D82281 is fitted with a protective Kevlar helmet. The purpose of this test is to discern whether or not SCP-4282's bullet can be stopped before killing the victim. Result: The projectile does not target D82281. See Incident Report 4282-A. Notes: Please refer to the updated testing procedures and Incident Report 4282-A. Dr. has been removed from the SCP-4282 research team. Date: February 15, 2005, at 10.15 hours. Description: SCP-4282 is fired by Dr. Leyland, while a D-class subject with a criminal history similar to the previous victims is positioned on the firing line, 
D44167, designated D1. D1 is fitted with a protective Kevlar helmet. D78221, designated D2, is placed in a secondary position on the firing line to intercept the projectile in case SCP-4282 does not target D1. The purpose of this test is to discern whether or not SCP-4282's bullet can be stopped before killing the victim. Result: The projectile strikes D1's helmet, preventing his death. Notes: The protective helmet has been proven effective in stopping the projectile. Due to the relative rarity of D-Class subjects that fit the criteria and at the recommendation of the Ethics Committee, all D-Class involved in testing of SCP-4282 will be fitted with protective helmets. Date: February 15, 2005 at 1100 hours. Description: SCP-4282 is fired by Dr. Leyland, while the corpse of D-56437, designated D-1, is positioned on the firing line. D-41167, from the previous test and designated D-2 for this test, is placed in the intercept position. Result: The projectile strikes D-2's helmet, ignoring the corpse of D-1. Notes: SCP-4282 does not target deceased humans. Date. February 15, 2005, at 1240 hours. Description: D15949, designated D1, is positioned on the firing line. D1 is not guilty of any crimes that would cause SCP-4282 to target him. D41167, designated D2, is placed in the intercept position. D1 is instructed to break open a locked box with a crowbar and take the model ship, which is functional as a vessel, contained inside. SCP-4282 is then fired by Dr. Leyland. Result: The projectile strikes D2's helmet, ignoring D1. Notes: SCP-4282 does not appear to identify models as actual vessels. It is unclear what process or mechanism is behind the apparent decisions that are made by SCP-4282. Date: February 15, 2005 at 1335 hours. Description: D15949, designated D1, is positioned on the firing line. D1, as shown in the last test, is not guilty of any crimes that would cause SCP-4282 to target him. D41167, designated D2, is placed in the intercept position. D1 is instructed to break open a locked shipping container with a crowbar and remove a kayak belonging to Dr. Leyland. SCP-4282 is then fired by Dr. Leyland. Result. The projectile strikes D1's helmet. Note: Why SCP-4282 chose to identify the kayak as a vessel but not the model is unclear. It may be related to the mass of the object stolen, but that would not explain why SCP-4282 doesn't target other types of theft. It seems to be able to recognize watercraft in general. Date: February 16, 2005 at 12:45 hours. Description: the individual parts of SCP-4282 are replicated by machine and replaced systematically to discern which components produce the anomalous effect. Result: Replacing any component of SCP-4282 with an identical copy causes the firearm to become completely inert, despite being loaded with the proper powder charge and ammunition. The only component in exception to these results was the barrel. Notes: See Incident Report 4282-B. Incident Report 4282-A On February 10, 2005, at approximately 11.25 hours, junior researcher Helm, who was on lunch in the cafeteria at the time, was killed by a gunshot to the back of the head, consistent with SCP-4282's anomalous ability. The incident coincided with a test being conducted on the other side of Site-68. It was later discovered that the D-Class involved in the test as the target had been falsely accused of the theft and sinking of a yacht belonging to a wealthy oil tycoon in 1987. The crime that junior researcher Helm committed that caused SCP-4282 to target him is unknown. I spotted Andrea. She was sitting alone, as usual, in our favorite spot. The background was awash with linoleum, white plastic, and fluorescent lighting. The collar of her white lab coat was tucked in the wrong way. Her glasses sat crooked on her nose. Her hair was all over the place. It would have been impossible for me to imagine a more perfect image. I could tell her. I could tell her how I feel about her, how beautiful she was, and how important our time together has been, and how the only bad thing about leaving the Foundation was that I'd be leaving her. I could tell her. 
because it wouldn't matter and I wouldn't remember it. I wouldn't remember her. I should tell her. I stared down at my tray as I walked towards her. Blue jello jiggled around in its clear plastic dish. As I sat down, she brushed a stray hair away from her eyes and forced a smile. It faded away shortly after, a blank stare in its place. You were the lucky one, she said. You won't even remember why you were sad. I know, I stammered, looking away. I'm sorry. We sat for a while, playing with our food and not speaking. I decided to say something. Those last few moments were important. The amnestics weren't going to leave any of her in my mind. I spoke as deliberately as my emotions would allow. I've been thinking about… memories. Trying to remember as much as I can before… before I… you know. I pushed my tray to the side and crossed my arms on the table. You remember that 4th of July beach party? Yeah. She said softly, as a faint smile found its way to her lips. Remember how we stole that canoe, and a whole bucket full of hot wings, and paddled out to the middle of the lake because everyone else was getting too drunk? And we floated there for hours, talking about our favorite constellations and watching fireworks go off? She chuckled. <laughs> yeah, and you fell into the water trying to do a handstand in the boat. I laughed too. I had to dry my clothes out by the fire, <laughs> and my socks got burned. The warm conversation was refreshing. The past few days had been hard on both of us. We were close, and had gotten each other through some significant hardships. The thought of not being there for one another was… unbearable. The same thought must have come to her. The smile ran from her face. It was a good memory. There were… there are so many good memories I don't want you to forget. Her eyes welled up with tears, and as she blinked, one ran down her face and settled in the corner of her mouth. How could I do this to her? How could I even consider leaving behind the only good thing the Foundation ever gave me? I felt so selfish. I wouldn't have to experience the pain of us not being together, but she would live with it for the rest of her time at the Foundation. My mind raced through its archive of the beautiful, bittersweet, terrifying memories I had made at Site-68. Andrea was at the center of all the best ones. Maybe I should stay. Maybe it wasn't too late to change my mind. I wasn't a bad researcher, surely the site director would be glad to keep me here. But of course, my thoughts drifted home to my dad. He needed me there with him. He wasn't going to make it on his own, and I sure as hell wasn't going to let someone else take care of him. I had to be there, no matter what the cost. But why? Does it have to cost so much? You know I have to leave. And you know why. I don't want to. I have to. She wiped a few tears away and sniffled, looking down into her lap. I know. She uttered faintly, still looking away. I needed to tell her. She needed to know that I loved her. Andrea, I… I stopped. I did love her, but maybe it would make things worse if I told her so. I needed to think about how our last moments would affect her. I just wish I had more time. I wish I could remember… more. And part of me wished she could forget. That's when it hit me. Testing procedures have been updated to reflect this incident by including a fail-safe secondary subject and it is recommended that future screening of D-Class subjects be conducted in a more thorough fashion. These safety oversights and testing will not be tolerated by the Foundation, and Dr. has been reprimanded appropriately. I will oversee testing of SCP-4282 from this point forward. Dr. Leyland. Incident Report, 4282-B. On February 16th, 2005, at approximately 12.45 hours, a test of SCP-4282 was conducted, in which the barrel was replaced with an identical replica in order to discern which component of the firearm produced the anomalous effect. Upon replacing the barrel, SCP-4282 malfunctioned. The projectile left the barrel directly, traveling approximately 1.5 meters, and stopped mid-flight. Researchers reported a low hum presumably caused by the bullet vibrating vigorously in mid-air, as observed in high-speed footage. The bullet remained in this state for approximately six seconds before disappearing. 
Fourteen seconds after this event, the bullet began to reappear and disappear at seemingly random points in space around the firing range. High-speed footage reveals that the direction of the round each time it reappeared was erratic, but the velocity was consistent with a normal shot. SCP-4282 did not appear to be able to target any specific individual. The round continued in its erratic behavior long enough to destroy a Foundation surveillance camera and strike Dr. Leyland in his lower left calf muscle, where the bullet remained until it could be surgically removed. Dr. Leyland reported a significant amount of pain caused by the round vibrating inside his leg for several minutes after the wound was inflicted. As of March 19, 2005, Dr. Leyland has fully recovered from his injuries. In light of recent events involving SCP-4282, I am indefinitely suspending any test that proposes alterations to the firearm itself. This includes attempting to duplicate or alter the anomalous ability for use by the Foundation. Dr. Leyland Addendum 4282-1206-2011 On the noted date, Foundation algorithms picked up a mention of the words Mutiny's Bane in an online blog post from an amateur treasure hunter. The individual discovered a small chest washed up on the beaches of the Akumal village in Quintana Roo, Mexico. The chest contained a wooden insert with two spaces carved out in the shape of two pistols. Underneath the insert was a scroll with a handwritten poem. Beware, all ye dogs who pillage and plunder, those who would take what they ought not own. Lest your head from your neck be rent asunder, heed my fair warning, and let it be known that the bane of mutiny and the helmsman's wrath do guard the long decks of this galleon so fine. Know that death himself will follow your path if you board this great vessel with greed in your mind. Both the chest and the scroll have been transferred to Site-68 and should be kept in containment with SCP-4282. While there is clear evidence that a second pistol could have existed alongside SCP-4282, it is unclear if it has similar anomalous properties or if it even still exists. Until there is tangible evidence for the object referred to as the Helmsman's Wrath, it will not receive an SCP designation. That's it for today everyone, thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to my level 4 patrons, Alexis Zagrate, Lesby Friends, Scrubversive, Deja Shade, and Max Loves Ears. And a huge extra special shout out to my level 5 patron, Dr. Serene. If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.